Dear. Gam. The web planet. It was a planet of webs. Episode 13. I did. What happened in it? Uh, well, there were some webs on the planet, and then some stuff happened, and then they got in the TARDIS and left. But, uh, long story long, uh, the... Yep. The TARDIS is still being pulled slowly down into whatever force field is making them get pulled down, and it's called the Web Planet, and we even see some webs on the planet, and it's pretty cool. And the TARDIS swoops in, and they're looking around, and they see nothing around them, but apparently they find out that the air is very, very thin, and it's kind of just sucky, and they don't really want to go outside, and Barbara's even day drinking, which is lovely. And amazing. I mean, wouldn't you? At this point, yes. If I was kidnapped and dragged along by a crazy old man. Maybe a little bit. Fair enough. They've been dragged off course, apparently, and the doctor literally just keeps going, hmm. 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 He does this for like a good five minutes. Uh, but the doctor is confident that he could fix it. But Vicky starts making weird uh, faces, and then we cut to outside, and there's a giant ant outside with pants. And all, there's there's two of them, and only two of their legs move. They are bipedal ants that are not really bipedal. It's... Yep. Oh. They're great. I love them. They're... Oh my god. Uh, Vicky is hearing humming in her head, apparently, and that's bugging her. But then, after a bit, it stops, and Vicky's like, oh, I'm okay. And then everyone just wants to leave, and the, and the doctor basically is, like, revving the TARDIS's engine. And then we cut back to the ants, and there's, like, this pill bug looking thing wiggling around on the ground towards one of the ants. And the TARDIS t- t- tries to uh, swoosh away, but it uh, can't. And then, whoop, whoop, the ants are the fucking police and they keep whooping and it's this noise that you're going to hear throughout the entire fucking episode. Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the ants. Whoop, whoop. Does it have the same ring to it? They oh. communicate, obviously, via uh, one-legged sign language to each other and the pill bug and everyone in the TARDIS starts to fall over for some reason. And the outside camera's wiggling around. And then the ship suddenly has no power for whatever reason. Barbara sees something the doctor says it's uh, it's a cosmic ray because she's a silly woman and of course that's all she sees. So she takes Vicky and they go lay her down c- because reasons and also she's a girl. And yep. Ian tells the doctor that the others aren't going to come and the two men are going to go out alone and fix the TARDIS. So Barbara takes a sedative cream thing. It looks like a cream when she takes it out. It winds up being aspirin. And the Ian the doctor... <sighs> Uh, wind up going alone. Barbara uh, takes the thing to Vicky and the doctor and Ian put on special jackets that are special oxygen style things in the front and basically a give you a helmet without really having a helmet. Oxygen in the front, carbon dioxide in the back. Ooh boy, that's a fart. Uh, the door won't open without uh, pow- without power, power though. So uh, the doctor is like, well, fuck, what do we do? And then takes his ring off, puts it in a microwave machine, which starts a light, which he puts his hand in front of a bunch of times, and it opens the door, and he giggles a lot. Yep. And I also kind of noted that at this point, the Lego doors are kind of fucked up on the front. Out front. I was They're sh- fine. They kind of look like fucked up, like dinged up, basically. They're fine. Don't worry about it. Mmm... Barbara asks Vicky uh, if she's in pain, but she's like, no, I'm not, but my ears are in pain, which is a really weird way to answer that. And Vicky has apparently never seen aspirin and tells Barbara that she's old and dumb and she's a boomer. And leeches and aspirin are the exact same thing. And Barbara... I mean... (laughs) Hmm. When you think about it, in the future, they probably would be considered as... Like, the same, considering, like, aspirin isn't really localized. Well, yeah. And then Barbara tells Vicky uh, that she's gonna go dance around a fire if she doesn't take the aspirin. So she's like, alright, fuck, fine. And then she also tells Vicky that Ian and her went to Rome to go see Nero. And Vicky's like, whoa! And she just basically goes like, hey, I'll tell you about it eventually. Don't worry about it. 
And then we go to the doctor, and he's looking at some rocks, and Ian is just looking around, and the rocks around here are heat-resistive, and Ian goes to give the doctor his pin, and it vanishes out of his hand. Just, woo, yep. it's gone. <laughs> There's a bunch of echoes around them, but they're not really doing real echo stuff. It, it sounded more like a bunch of people shouting back at them, which was hilarious. And echo! Echo. Fuck off. Fuck off. Like that that, that sort, of, sort of thing. And, uh, of course, uh, Barbara is dusting a butterfly in a box because, of course, she is. And she's a woman, so she cleans. And Barbara, well, Barbara's arm then lifts up randomly without her noticing, and then she notices, and she's really weirded out. And I'm not going to say my next slide, because that's the spoiler. Um, <laughs> Nikki wakes up. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Would you rather me just say my next slide? No, no, I don't want you to spoil anything. Hmm. Nikki wakes up uh, and chats with Barbara and sees her arm move and literally makes fun of her for it. And it's... Really bizarre because Barbara's coming to Vicky and going like I'm having like emotional issues right now. Like please, like just talk to me. And she's just like giggling at Barbara, and it's so much. Ugh. And God, fuck! There was so much of this episode. Ian and the Doctor uh, find a pyramid with a very very realistic pyramid and a moth on top. And we joked that Mothra was here to help. And it was a very realistic chunk of a Toblerone cut off from space. And it has nothing to do with the TARDIS. So they decide to ignore yep. it. And then Ian takes off his belt, which is apparently a tie? Because the doctor didn't have a tie in the... Tar I don't know. And they dip it in some of the water that they found. And apparently it's acid. Which then ruins his tie. And then Ian decides to sniff the tie and, like, touch it a whole bunch. And it was really bizarre that he did, even though it was just an acid. And then just kind of tosses it to the side. And then an ant uh, drops a yep. rock into the acid from above. And Ian, of course, not seeing it. He's like, Doctor, there was a, there was a light in the water or something. And I saw a thing and it was like, oh... And then, whoop, whoop, the ant police are back making the whoop, whoops. And whoop, whoop. they pretty much catch Ian and the doctor at this point, I believe. And uh, Barbara and Vicky's heads are apparently both hurting. And they see the doors to the TARDIS open. And the console of the TARDIS is spinning and Barbara's arm is being pulled again. And so she just kind of walks out the door. And then the console spins a little bit more and Vicky is finally awake and getting up and... Noting that the doors are open and that Barbara has left and, you know, left the doors open, she's yep. just, you know, freaking out. And the Doctor and the Ian decide to run back uh, to the TARDIS and Ian is caught in a net because, of course, he is. Barbara is slowly walking towards the acid because, of course, and Nikki is in the ship being thrown around and smacks some buttons on the TARDIS, making it go whoosh whoosh. And, oh, the TARDIS is left without them, and the Doctor is sad. And that, Doctor is sad. That was the episode. That was a sad Doctor. Can I just say, there was that whole bit, legitimately, where Barbara was being, like, her arm was pulling her towards the acid, but then nothing came of that. Well, it, it did, because the, the Monoptra came and saved her in the... Bef after that, yeah, but she was like past the acid at that point, is what I'm saying. Well, te the, t the editing was not the best. Yes. Uh, so, um, there's a lot about this episode mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to get into later. Uh, but, I guess to start off, um, so, the guys who are in the zombie costumes... Uh -huh. They were credited as Zabi operators. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, then they were also then credited as Zabi, but, like, operators of the costume. It's like, it, I, I wouldn't really say they're operating that costume. I'd say more they're just wearing it, but... Well, they kind of, like, whatever. operated, like, the arms to do things. Yeah, fair enough. Um, also, this episode is one where Barbara takes a holiday... 
So she doesn't appear in one of these episodes because, you know, she uh, mm-hmm. she, she wanted a holiday. Yeah. And she's actually not billed in the closing credits for that episode, but she oh. then complained about it. Uh, uh, she was like, I mean, come on, put me on it still. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, but they didn't, because, mm. you know, women. Uh, <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, they also expected, like... This was another one of those stories where they were like, oh shit, we we can make something out of this. Like, we can... The merchandising with these characters, like, we can yeah. we can do something here. Like, we can bring them back, like, the Daleks. The costumes of the Zabi were so fucking hard to work with. Oh, By boy. the end of the episode, they're like, we are never bringing these aliens back ever again. Uh, it... The episode's scope is so much bigger than they could have done in the 60s. Mm-hmm. Like, this is kind of the... This is an episode that, like, with a little bit of tweaking, you could have basically put in, like, 20... Like, 2020. Doctor Who. Like, mm-hmm. you just need a little bit of tweaking, and, like, th- it would have fit perfectly. Yeah. The problem is, it's made in the 60s, so the... The, uh... The production value is hilariously adorable. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I will say, you know how we were joking about them putting Vaseline on the camera? Mm-hmm. They didn't actually do that. Uh-huh. They wanted it to look like they did, so they used a special lens. But uh-huh. that that is meant to denote the thin atmosphere of the, of the planet. How? I have no fucking clue. Don't ask me. Oh, good. That's great. <sighs> I, I, I just don't understand how that... Okay, sure. Episode 2! Did you catch the name of it? Because I didn't. We rushed through it. <sighs> Look, the I'm sorry. Zabi. You're the one that had to go do something. Okay. The Zabi. Okay, well, the Zabi. Uh, the doctor comes back to Ian, and Ian's just on the ground and the doctor touches him and Ian's like <laughs> and Ian sits up covered in dust and talking about how his face really hurts and how it's stinging and Ian wants to to go back to the TARDIS but the doc- doctor basically just makes a sad face and they're just like oh and Barbara is still uh, quote unquote sleepwalking or whatever and then She's there's fun. there's another bug man popping up behind her oh no and the doctor is now having breathing problems because the suits that they have apparently only work for about an hour or so for some reason. And then the doctor points out some ridges in the sand and goes, hmm, it looks like the TARDIS was dragged away. And it's slowly, apparently, we see wriggling past an ant with uh, Vicky inside. And it's a very small miniature. It's a very cute, tiny, cute, small miniature. Yep, it is adorable. Yeah. Um, and then she finally sees an ant, and she's like, oh god, somebody help me. And the bee man takes Barbara, and leads her into a cave with other bees! And they force her to kneel down, and they examine her, and then they also take her bracelet off and chuck it into the acid. And Barbara comes to and wonders where her bracelet has gone, and also who the fuck are these bees? The bees. What are the bees? The bees. The bees. The bees. The bees, the bees knees. Uh, the doctor and Ian uh, follow the drag marts, but they can't really seem to find anything. But the doctor also follows some claw footprints, and Ian finds a chrysalis moth that he instantly kills. Which was something. And the yep. planet apparently has a ton of moons as well, and the TARDIS is being dragged further, and Vicky just goes, Jeez. help me. And it's dragged into a wiggly vine door. But... Vine door! We then cut back to Barbara, who apparently can't remember anything, and they're like, all right, well, kill her! And she's like, wait, no. And the Zo- apparently the ants are named Zarbies, which are the ones that the bees are scared of. And they debate killing Barbara, and she sneaks a knife towards herself so she can run away. And then she tries to run away, and then instantly trips outside of the door. Which is... Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so Ian and the Doctor are wandering around, and then they look up into the sky, and what do you think they see, Gam? I don't know. What do they see? The Aurora? It looks like a, a giant 
giant uh, phenomenon to me. I, I believe it was the Aurora Borealis. It was localized at, entirely... At this, at this time of year? At this time of year. Localized entirely above what? this planet. Wow. In this part Can of I the universe. It? You may not see it, Ian. They literally stop oh. looking at it and then walk away. <laughs> They're just like, oh, look, and then walk away and don't bring it back up. Oh. Yeah. Ian and the doctor are suddenly confronted by ants, and the doctor tells Ian to stand still, and the doctor has no idea what species these are or who they are at all, and he's like, I don't understand. Like, they don't seem to be talking to me or anything, and it's very weird. And then Vicky in the TARDIS has apparently evened out, and the door's open, and she's scared and confused, and she calls out for everybody to come help her, except Barbara. She does not call out for Hell. Barbara. <laughs> Ian, doctor, that one person I don't Eon. give a fuck about who wanted to give me leeches. What? Wow, really? <laughs> um. Wow. The door's open, and it's a viney-covered room with no discernible use, but then the ants walk straight up to her, and Vicky's obviously now dead. Of course. And the doctor and Ian see organic matter growing from the walls themselves, and the plant is apparently named Fortis? Vortis? Let's say Vortis. So, like, vor, but with tis at the end. Um... <sighs> An ant tries to go into the TARDIS and then freaks the fuck out and makes a whole bunch of emergency whoops. Boop, 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 and boop, boop, boop. that's pretty much what it sounded like, yeah. Uh, Ian shoves an ant away from Vicky, and the doctor's obsessed with making with his ship, asking, like, who went inside? What the fuck happened? Because he literally just watched an ant go inside, but I guess that doesn't matter. <sighs> Barbara yeah. is then by the acid pool, but then is taken by the ants. And then the bees are also surrounded by the ants, but radio out, uh, and it, are surrounded by the ants, but if they radio out, they will be found, but they also need to tell the uh, army something, so they're like, I guess we have to make this decision. Fleet. Huh? Their invasion fleet, yes. Yeah. So they Rubik's Cube some crystals around and call their invasion force. And then the yep. ants, of course, find them, and they all get into a big bug fight. And big a, bug fight. And the best bug of them all finally comes in. Whitey. Nope, the pill bug. Oh, yeah, the pill bug, sorry. The pill bugs I, I are just so really good. I really love Whitey. I know, we all do. Uh, he comes in and just zaps one of them to death, which, by the way, the pill bugs are literal, like, roly-poly slash pill bugs slash... They have a million names. Just, just Google it. And they have guns at the end of their face. Yep. That's the whole... Schnoz is a gun. That's their whole thing. Schnoz um, gun. Also, Barbara is apparently following them, who now has a big old gold necklace on her. Because... Oh, no. Why not? And the bee... The remaining bee removes it, and she's brought back to reality. And apparently, gold can oh, mind gravity. control you here? Because yeah, it's, weird, it's huh? the symbol of power here. Yeah, weird. Weird, it's, huh? Hmm, it's almost like that was pretty obvious at first. And they're taken to the mine of needles to be put to work, but in reality, they take the bee and they cut him up into carryable pieces. And. Buzz, buzz. And, she, and Barbara watches and she's like, no, no! And Back then, in the mine. <laughs> Well, I was going more for, like, a and Gordon, and he went faster. But, sure. And the pants were dead. <laughs> God damn it. So, the doctor is trying to sign language uh, to reason with the ants, but apparently it does nothing. And then uh, a tube comes down and onto the doctor. and the it has of silence. It has some roots in it, and it starts to talk to him. And then... That that's that's the episode. Oh, oh no! Oh no! And then he went Skin. faster. And then <laughs> there were ghost pants. And uh, so he went faster, and he shot many bullets. I feel many, like that's many. way too date of a reference now. No, people still know what that is. They have to, um, right? Ah, I, I hope so. Uh, so, 
they got a choreographer for the Monoptra, as you see. With yeah. The, they have, like, weird movements. Yep. She was so good at her job with, like, giving them distinct movements and, like, the speech style that they were just like, hey, do you want to just be one of them? Oh. <laughs> so she's Vrestrin. <laughs> oh. Vrestrin is, uh, is fucking the choreographer for all of them. And the best part is she got a special on-screen credit for it. And it was, uh, insect movement by. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> so it's like, what did you do on the show? Oh, you know, I was the one in charge of the insect movement. You know what? I, that would, I want that job. I want to be the insect cur- choreographer. That's what I want. The insect choreographer. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of an opera, actually, when they were auditioning people for them, they actually wanted dancers because mm-hmm. of the way that they move. Yeah. Uh, one of the people who applied, they were, the director essentially went, uh, no, you're not, you're way too good for this. You're way too talented <laughs> to just be a rabbit suited monster. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was like, I, I promise, like, I'll give you, when I need someone who's a human, I'll call you back. Uh, he eventually came back and he becomes a fucking companion. <laughs> oh. He's a bit well, of a dull something. companion, but I mean, most of them are in the, uh, in the first Doctor's run. Uh, mm. yeah. Anyway. Episode three. I feel like there's going to be a lot of little information about this episode. Oh, there is, but I need to wait till the end so <sighs> mm-hmm. I don't spoil the story. Uh, escape to danger! Uh, we we tried going at 1.5 speed, but Gam stopped it and it made me really sad. Um, and they think that the Doctor is apparently part of the invasion of Minoptra, and the Doctor's like, no, I'm, I'm not. And the the wall lifts an arm and shoots towards the ants, being all scary, scary. But apparently, Vicky turned the ship back on, relinking fluid or something, so everyone's okay. And yeah, do- she peed on the TARDIS and it started working again. Yes, and the Doctor uh, offers to help the ants because reasons. And then we cut to the bee, which, by the way, in my notes, I went back and forth quite a lot between bees and moths because bees are just like my everyday thing. Right now, because of the fucking community, so I'm just. I mean, they look me. like bee moths. Yeah. They are meant to be bee moths. I, I imagine that they were moths, and I just kept calling them bees. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so we cut to a bee who just uh, flies the fuck off, by the way. <laughs> and. Yeah. He just fucks off. It's amazing. And the doctor is back in the tube, and they ask about the TARDIS and what the fuck is happening. And the womanly, womanly voice in the tube is like, "You work for them," and he's like, "Mm." And he asks where Barbara is, and they say she's in the needle place. And the tube wants to know the needle place. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tube wants to know where all the armies are, and the tube is like, "I want an astral map." And the doctor's like, "I could hook you up." And everyone but Vicky is allowed to go back into the TARDIS because she's a hostage. And then we see... God, we see an ant bump into the camera running by it. (laughs) And... Yeah. It was like... It wasn't even like a small bump. It was like a very obvious... Like, the camera went... It was just like, oh, okay. To be fair, the guy in the costume literally could not see. Yeah, I understand that. Um, the Doctor and Ian are just relaxing in the TARDIS, hilariously. And then Ian dabs some stuff on his face that, uh, earlier we made mention that, uh, Susan, or no, Barbara, wow, Susan, Barbara, uh, cle- I miss Susan. Cle- I don't. She cleaned up everything. Wow. Because she is a woman, of course, and she dusted that butterfly, so everything is nice and in place. So now, uh, Ian dabs some stuff on his face and he feels better. And the doctor basically just goes like, I don't have like a name for them, so like they're just ants. Like, okay. Ants. Um And then they made the most annoying claim in this fucking show, which was that because the air was thinner, it let the ants grow to huge prehistoric sizes. And I just Kind of shut my mouth. <laughs> yep. After a bit. Do you have a problem with that? Yes, I do. This show why? is totally perfectly side. You want to actually know why? Do you want to actually get into this? No. Okay, thank you. 
<laughs> this show is entirely scientifically accurate. If if you're wondering, well, that's why just... they get a, a scientific advisor on soon. Okay, I guess I should clarify actually, um, because there was a vast amount of oxygen on the planet beforehand, and bugs breathe through their skin. Uh, back in the uh, dinosaur and prehistoric ages, uh, ants were fucking huge. All bugs were fucking huge. Like, car Volkswagen-sized bugs. Very big. Very scary. Don't fuck with them. The more big boy bugs. The more oxygen that is in your air, the bigger bugs can be, is, is what it basically boils down to. Um, yep. So, this planet of very thin air makes very big bugs, apparently. And the doctor decides he wants to talk to the ant queen. And the doctor gives Ian something to help them breathe. Uh, but they are apparently never allowed to unplug the time-space map or something or other that they bring out of the TARDIS. Yeah. And the tube thing comes back down and he says... Uh, you're fucking with my tools, I can't search for anything because you're doing shit. And the tube basically goes, if you take advantage of me, I'm gonna fucking kill you. And then Ian leaves to go find Barbara because they automatically take advantage of her. And then yep. the doctor gives Vicky some chocolate so that she feels better. And she's a child. Did you know she's a child? I think she's a child. She is like child. Mm. So Ian is wandering around the colony, uh, hiding from ants. The doctor is listening into an invasion force of the Monoptera. And there's something about a crater of needles and a lot of staticky McDonald's orders. And um, Ian <laughs> is wandering around again, trying to sneak his way around some ants. And in fact, knocks one over. He sends an alarm off, and of course all the ants come after him. Uh, and he's kind of hiding in a wall, and then... The moving bench shoots him, uh, and Ian runs off, and the bee chases after Ian because they're already outside somehow, and then the tube says that, hey, uh, you tried to run away, and hey, I could kill you if you don't, like, do what I say. And the doctor yep. goes, uh, kill me, and you don't get to know what I know. And he's like, what do you know? And he's like, I know what I know. And she's like, well, what do you know? And he's like, I know. What I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know? I know. Yeah. You know? I know. Oh, I know. Oh, do you know? I know. And Vicky has, like, this huge gold necklace on her, which they take off. And Vicky walks back to the ship, grabs a box. It's one of the doctor's specimens, though. Because she's a girl and she's dumb and she grabbed the wrong box. But we find out that the ant hates it. Yep. <sighs> It's a, it's a tarantula that the ant hates. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that God. Ian is on a date uh, with the bee, and they decide to have a nice talk about their dreams and their their ambitions and, like, what how many kids they'd like to have and murder and genocide and, like, the war and flying and where would they like to go on their next date? Um, and we find out Where would they? that it was their planet originally, because of course it was. And the yep. ants aren't intelligent, actually. And they're more like cattle, but everyone was at peace. And then a dark power made them violent. And they now live on a moon planet that's near them. But they really, really want to return home. And they're not really ready to return home, but they're going to return home anyway because they're dying on the other planet because they're not used to it. And then they both I mean, decide to go to the Crater of Needles to rescue all their friends. And then there's suddenly an ambush! Oh no! <gasps> ambush! 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 Um, <gasps> ambush! Ambush! And the ground is apparently giving way for where they were hiding. It was very hard to see. <laughs> they go into like this crevice and then the ground starts to give way under them and they just fall? thus escaping, and then the episode ends. Yeah. Yeah. They fall. They yeah. die. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's all fine. Don't worry. It's Everything's fine. fine. It's fine. <sighs> yep. So. So. 
talking about like uh, little uh, references in the new series to the old series. This is one that basically no one got because it's such a minor little reference. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So this, so this planet Vortis is mm-hmm. in the Isop Galaxy. Okay. Does that mean anything yep. to me? Uh, no, it won't, because you won't even know what I'm about to say. So, in the new series, there's this ca- there was this character called the Face of Bo, right? Uh-huh. You know him, Big Face, dude? Yeah. Big Face? Uh, he is said to be known as the oldest living inhabitant of the Isop Galaxy. Uh-huh. So, they, they made a little reference there. I was going like, to say, hey. I, d- I do remember the Face of Bo. Yeah. 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 Good old Face of Bo. Um... So, I will start to mention it here, but I'll get into detail a little bit later on. I just want you to have it on your mind. So, when writing this story, the writer initially was uh, wanted to write kind of a war-type story. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, something like D-Day, uh, something like Prisoners of War, that type of thing. The script editor saw the story and immediately thought, Oh, this is a story about, like, socialism. Mm-hmm. Like, because you have the oppressed, the Zabi, and the oppressors, the Monoptra. Yeah. Um, to which the writer went, what? <laughs> I didn't yeah. mean to do that at all. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll elaborate a little bit more on, like, what specifically later on, but now that you know about it, think about it as you explain what happens in the next episode, dear. Socialism? Socialism. Socialism slash communism. Oh, an oppressed class. Oh, uh, a, yeah, no, yeah. Again, God. I'll get into it more because it actually mm. has a lot of political dialogue from the '60s with uh, a lot of people's views of communism was that of an insect hierarchy where uh, everyone had to conform to live, uh, and there were no such things as differences. Uh, mm-hmm. Communism was conformity. I'm just gonna pull my mic a little bit closer to me because I uh, turned yeah. my game down some. Um, okay. Uh, so, the yep. crater of, of needles. Uh, Ian and the bee are confronted by something. Oh, no. And the we bee. see the crater of needles and everyone is high-hoeing their hearts out in a prison camp. And uh, Barbara is also there, but having trouble breathing because of the atmosphere, because of course. But they're heaping vegetation into the acid streams to keep building the castle, I believe. No one knows what's at the center of it, though, and they call it the Animus. And they talk about how they answer cattle again and how they have, like, no speech, no really, no sort of, like, mental capacity for anything. It's just like, uh uh-huh. And Uh I guess it's supposed to make you feel better for, like, beating them up or something, but I don't know. Uh, the ship is supposed to arrive soon, TM, though, to come save the planet, and the doctor is looking around, and an ant stares at him kind of aggressively, and Vicky really isn't sure why they haven't attacked yet, and the doctor wants to wait for Ian and Barbara, of course. Vicky has a necklace put on her, and the doctor is tubed again, and he tells them all the information and says, Let Vicky go! And Let she- my Vicky go! Bye, Vicky, go! Let my Vicky go! Oh! Vicky uh, is like, oh, and she goes to get his walking stick, and the pill bugs and the ants freak out in the mines, and they herd everyone into a single area because there's an alarm going off. Ian and the bee uh, are taken by other kinds of pill bug things. They were like bipedal pill bug things instead of like dog like ones. And then they make them stick their hands in some goo, which I assume was supposed to be, like, glue or something. And the... Yeah. The Optera apparently are killed from people above them or something. And they say, if the lights say that they come from above, that they're going to die and get thrown in the fire. It was... Yep. <sighs> Barbara... Uh, is handed, I assume, some food from a bee, and then they start talking amongst themselves, going like, well, we don't want to make a move yet, and we're worried that the doctor is going to help the ants. Uh, and there, there's, a, there's a thing being planned on top of the plateau, and the bees are all going to be massacred if they were told their plans. And they were going to kill the animus, but now it's all fucked up. And so Vicky uses her spider 
in uh, to chase off an ant and they take the weird gold necklace and then they decide to realign the power of gold or some shit and we see a pill bug and an ant hanging out with the gun and everyone rushes the gun bug killing it against a rock and spinning the ant around and then knocking him over so he can't get back up the doctor puts the huh. necklace onto the astral map and deactivates it uh, hopefully they aren't fully sure but they're like i believe we've deactivated it and the <laughs> <laughs> it just works yeah the Doctor also takes a recording of the bees and shows it to the tube that he wasn't lying, but the tube is very angry because she could have learned this forever ago and he he should have he should have known this. And the doctor uh, is just like, listen, like you still need me. And the doc tube's like, no, I don't. And the ants take Vicky and the doctor and put them both in gold necklace thingies. Oh. And Barbara and the bees go up to the plateau in time, apparently, but there's boop boop wing around them, and everything is kind of scary. <sighs> the tiny built pill bug children with Ian are hopping around and says to throw them into the fire chasm, but then the bee tells them that they were here to save them and also that they are Monoptera slash bees, and they're like, oh, you're my god, and- Weeby like, bees! They extend their wings and the little pip bugs are like, whoa, you are literally Jesus. And then Barbara and the coo are hanging out and another monopter flies in and they go, no, please leave. Everything's fucked up. They're like, nah, we're already committed to this attack. So we're going to do it anyway. And then the bees fly around and the gun bugs wiggle in and shoot them. And none of the bees are honestly doing well. And like all of them are dying. And the spearhead tries to retreat, but gets shot at. Oh no, it's a massacre, dear. Mm -hmm. And then another bee kills an ant for fucking once. And then old Whitey is there to say hello. And then that's where the episode ends. Old Whitey, no. Old Whitey, no. No, it's a massacre, no! We, we should explain that Old Whitey was an ant that specifically had, like, a white spot on its face. Yeah, we called it Whitey because he has the white spot. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um... <laughs> so, uh, originally, the zombie had this power... The, 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 originally, they were going to have the ability to spit venom. Uh-huh. And, uh, you can imagine how nightmarish it would have been for them to include that in the costume. Thankfully, they didn't, which is why, at literally the last minute, uh, they were like, okay, how about instead we have, like, a subspecies that spits venom instead? And that's how we got the grubs. Ooh. Grubby, grubby, grubby. Um, so, wait, who were the grubbies? Were they the pill bugs, or were they the, the p bipedal pill bugs? Uh, I believe... Oh, shit. I think it's meant to be the, the bipedal ones, not the mm -hmm. pill bug pill bugs. Okay. Um, I, it kind of makes sense either way, though. Um, it could be either or. But this episode is also the one where Ian's actor decided that he wanted to leave the show. He was like, I'm going to leave soon. He was like, I'm starting to lose... I'm starting to lose some uh, interest in the show. I want to go do bigger and better things. Aww. So, uh, he might leave soon, dear. Aww. I, I don't mind. <laughs> wow, okay. Wow, you're gonna miss... You're not even gonna miss Ian. I mean, I am a little bit. I just... I probably would miss Barbara more. Okay, fine. Wow. So you're fine if Ian leaves, but if Barbara leaves, you're ruined. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Tell us what happens in the next episode, dear. Well, uh, more moths die. And that's about it. And then some stuff happens. Th that, that's, that's what happens. Yeah? O okay, fine. Fine, I guess. 
It's it's the invasion. Barbara and everyone are surrounded, but Barbara touches a wall and it moves. And Vicky is awake, actually, apparently, and her necklace thing is fine. And she uses it to knock the necklace thing off the doctor. And she put on the busted necklace like a smarty pants. And the doctor uses his ring to reverse everything and control the necklace. And they make a distraction and put the necklace onto an ant, thus controlling it. Which also, by the way, there are multiple instances of them bending these pure gold necklaces very easily. (laughs) And it's amazing. Uh... So the mind control of the ant works, and they all try to leave. And then we see Barbara is looking at a huge hole in the ground. It is apparently, it is beautiful, and it is a temple of light or something. And there's apparently tons across the entire planet, but they always forget who, where they are. Oh, sorry. That was just in a phone call. Mm. Um... The moth bees uh, meet up again, and they're like, say the magic word. And he's like, electron. And they're like, all right, cool. Um, (laughs) Can I just mention that guns are electron guns as well? So it's like, that's even more of a dumb fucking name for a car word. Yeah, it is. God. Why? (sighs) They are talking about recollecting the armies and trying again. And Barbara's like, you're stupid. And then they go, oh, I, I guess we are. And then there's like a speech that they have about light and flying and arm waving. And none of them like Barbara. And they all decide, let's attack the Animus anyway. And then there's this whole <laughs> thing that they just make these weird fucking noises at each other. And it's a lot. <laughs> and it's not even, they're like hissing. So it's like, <laughs> So I don't know. I don't. I can't recreate it. It it'd be too hard to recreate it. Yeah. <sighs> it is yeah. hard. They, they, it is very unique sound. I will say. It's kind of like a cat hiss, but also like close to how they vocally. It's like a hiss and a grunt at the same time. Yeah, something like that. Ian is talking to his moth friend, and they are no longer bound, apparently, and to be killed. Uh, the pillbugs come up and say they know where the animus is. And the doctor and Vicky come out into an open area and talk about how it's just so pleasant. And through this entire scene, I couldn't see through the fucking margarine. There was so much Yeah, that, that entire scene, you can't see a fucking thing. Because, like, that filter really gets in the way. Yeah, there are multiple times where it's like... Because even if you're not hearing impaired or otherwise like most humans tend to look at people's mouths when they talk just to like make Uh, sure you know what they're saying um that's why it's a thing of confidence to look someone in the eye instead of at their mouth and so it was kind of hard when they were like mumbling some parts it's just like okay well fuck mumbling yeah (sighs) vicky has decided doesn't help that like it also made it really hard to tell the monoptrons apart (laughs) yeah uh, Vicky decided to name the ant Zombo. Because of Zombo course she come. did. Uh, and her previous pet died, so she needs a new one. Yeah, she... remember Barbara fucking killed it. Yes. Uh, Vicky wants to make Zombo a pet, but the doctor just goes like, Law. And then they ignore the entire conversation. And the Ooh. pill bugs beat it so the stone with their very, very extended arm movements. And Ian and the moth follow after, but the tunnel... Okay, this is about to get hard to understand because they talk very (laughs) roughly. The tunnel breathes vapor, so it's not there. And the wall is not friendly, so they must break it. It is a silent wall, so they must put mouths in it to speak. Yeah. That was literally from the show. Yep. And... I mean, it's a, it's kind of a, it's it's kind of poetic. It's like, uh-huh. it, 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 well, it's not so the wall can speak. It's so the wall can speak light. It's like, okay, they don't really know how to what holes are. They think they're like mouths. So I guess that kind of makes sense. I I, I guess. Um, Ian and his moth friend are hanging out and having a good time. Ian and uh, narrowly avoids some falling rocks, so they do a dig. 
And then Barbara is giving some directions to a chalk drawing on the floor that she somehow made. But the plans are all bad, and they decide to make a mock attack. And they're like, no, that's a bad idea. And then they all hiss at each other. And then the Doctor, Zombo, and Vicky all show up with Barbara and them. And everyone's yeah. scared as shit of the fucking weird ant. The Doctor's like, do not touch him! He is my friend. And <laughs> He is my friend. <laughs> he is my friend. And they're like, oh, fuck, you fucking, you got an ant. And then we go back to Ian and the pill bugs, and... A vapor seeps at their feet, so they need to move slowly, but there's a mouth in the wall that drools and smoke comes out, so one of the pill bugs plugs it with her body and dies. Yep. <gasps> yep. The doctor is wondering what is at the center of the web, and they talk about how it was there before uh, they wrote history about it. So it was there before they were, basically. And it is apparently at the magnetic pole of the planet, which may give it some power. And the doctor decides to change Barbara's plan, saying that he'll take the isotope instead of that one moth. And all the bees uh, want Zombo for their attack, but the doctor's like, it takes this ring to control him, and my ring's really, really valuable. And the moth goes, more valuable than the lives of our entire race? And he's like... Yeah, it is. And <laughs> then Barbara comes up. She's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, I was just thinking about giving this ring to them. Like, playing playing it off, because, of course. And so yep. they get the ring, and they get Zombo. And, <sighs> and the doctor takes the isotope, which he gives to Vicky. Because it might be easier to hide on her, even though she doesn't have pockets. And yeah, it's fucking dumb. Ian and the bugs decide to go to the planet core from where they are. And the doctor and Vicky are being shot with a bunch of tree web wall guns because they were brought back to the ant hive and they were like, you ran away. So they shoot them with web guns. And that was the episode. Yeah. I mean, the web guns did their shit. Yes. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't fail. They did their stuff. Yeah, I guess. Um, God, this. <sighs> so, Socialism. fun fact about this episode. This episode had the highest viewing figures of any Doctor Who episode in the sixties. Oh God. Wow. Okay. Um, plus also Peter Capaldi, who played the twelfth Doctor. Uh, when he was, um, when he, uh, essentially was announced to be the, uh, the Twelfth Doctor, he was reminiscing about, like, his childhood growing up watching Doctor Who, and this was, like, the episode that stood out to him the most. Like, it was oh. the, it was the one that stood on his mind, and, like, he would think about it constantly, about how great it was, and then the DVD came out, and he watched it, and he was like, oh, maybe not. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's such a, it, it's such an ambitious episode for what they could do. Mm -hmm. It's just honestly a shame that it was made in the sixties. I mean, they they did try. I I mean, I'll give them that. They did obviously try. They did like hire a choreographer and stuff like that, and it was like decently trying and just sixties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's just a shame, you know. But just because it was watched by the most doesn't mean it was the best. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were hoping that um, the Zabi would come would come back as like a new reoccurring monster, but the the design of them and the costumes were just so hard to work with that they just couldn't bring it back. There was no way they they wanted to or could at all. So they were like, yeah, yeah sorry, but no. They do come back imagine. in like. Uh, comic and book and audiobook form, but never back on the actual show. Yeah. But yeah. Any other cool facts, or... Uh, you're a nerd. Thanks. I'm not the one with the huge <laughs> Doctor Who collection, but thanks. Shut up. Um, <laughs> okay, well, the, 
Okay, this was one of those episodes that they thought they lost in the original, like, 70s purge of all the shit. Uh, they thankfully found it in the late 70s, but uh, they found it because of a sale, um, the, the print that they had sent to Algeria, so they could air the episode. So, in the original uh, print that they had gotten for it, the next episode thing doesn't actually say what the lion which is the crusade it actually says the space museum which is the episode after because they did not sell the crusade to muslim countries for kind of obvious reasons yeah uh because it's about richard the lionheart and about the crusades Mm -hmm. and uh yeah it would not have gone down well yeah um let me tell you unfortunately we don't get to watch the crusade because it is still a missing episode um Mm -hmm. but Oh, well. Anyway, next episode. Last episode. Uh, the center. The doctor and Vicky are separated, and the tube comes down to talk to him and saying that he's no use to them and needs to be taken to the center, which is literally the plan. So, like, alright, well, whatever. But apparently, when the doctor asks Vicky back for the astromap, um, she apparently... Or she left the isotope in the astromap. So everything is literally fucked up. And I hated everything that was happening. Um, yep. Ian and them have found water. And talk about bringing it to the surface that will help them farm. And they are stronger than evil, apparently. And the Zarbi have larvae guns, I just realized at that point. And then... <laughs> they take the necklace off the ant and put it on the larva gun instead, and it kills. It it kills the moth that did it, but also the gun got squished, so it's worthless, I guess. And the ant that was with them, good old Whitey, like apparently didn't raise an alarm or anything, because of course it didn't. Good old Whitey. <sighs> they move into the center, and apparently the light is so bright that they can't see anything. But then suddenly Vicky is okay enough to look at it and shout for it to go away, but then, like, shields her eyes again or whatever. And guess what? Gam, guess what? 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 It's a giant spider! <gasps> Who could have seen that coming? Even though it's not really, but, I, I mean, okay. <laughs> I, I kind of expected it when she pulled out the spider and they made a whole thing of it. it it's kind of not really a spider. They, they call it a spider, basically. I guess. It's like a jellyfish it's tentacle a, spider thing. What it is, we'll get into what it is in a bit, because I okay, have to fine. explain a little bit of the extended universe, but... Ian and everyone are climbing up the vines and are almost there. Barbara and the Clarou go in to fight another amp, and one guy gets his arm bitten off, I assume. And the Doctor and Vicky are dead, probably, and covered in vines. Barbara find the ast- find the things, finds the thing in the astral map, and the Doctor uses it. And a map of the doctor and uses it to call the moth main force. And they're like, hey, don't land. You're going to die. And then suddenly they find the isotope and want to take it to the center to finish off their plan. Ian is touching some stuff and crawling around the vines. <laughs> he uses a knife crystal to cut through whatever it is that's above him. And the isotope has to be thrown apparently at the dark side of the animus. They play a little bit of hot potato and get past the ants and are suddenly blinded by very bright lights. The moths really want to touch the lamp, but the lamp is evil, and GDQ would be very sad. Barbara tries, lamp. To, <laughs> Barbara tries to kind of pull at it, and it doesn't really work. Ian suddenly shows up, so all right, he's going to help. He winds up not helping at all. Barbara moves closer to the thing, and it dies, apparently. Yep. The, it, it was a lot of buildup for just <laughs> it dying. <sighs> it died. The, the Zarbi wake up. Even though it doesn't really die, but the Zarbi I'll wake up it. and dig at the ground, uh, bringing the water back, I guess. And the moths scare well, them the off. Well, the Zarbi are no longer Not, under control. The moths scare the them off at, and point at the water and then drink from it and talk about how the Atlas killed the water. And then Barbara is seeing playing Russian roulette with one of the pill bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and, she really is. Yeah. Uh, the pill bugs are the the other pill bugs are now out in the open and getting used to light because we learned that actually they're moth thingies that just went underground and crawled on the ground so they didn't have wings. 
Oh no! Oh, but no. they won't become. They won't become like winged. But their no. children will. Their so children get to will. it. Yep. And then they talk about some colors or some shit for a while, and I zoned out because I was like, "Why are you fucking talking about colors? This show is black and white." And then everyone <laughs> decides to leave, and the TARDIS whooshes off. And the next episode is called The Lion. There you go. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Animus. Mm-hmm. Dear, have you ever heard of a concept called The Great Old Ones? Yes. The Animus is a Great Old One. There is slight overlap in mythology with Doctor Who and H.P. Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. Um, in that... Uh, the, the old ones in Doctor Who are essentially ancient creatures that were the humanity's worst fucking nightmares that had survived the destruction of the previous universe and were able to survive in hours... Yeah. Uh, long story short, there are a few of them. We don't see... I, technically, the toy maker is one, and I really wish we could watch that episode, but it's missing, so we can't. Fucking animate it, please. The Celestial Toy Maker is a great episode. Um, mm-hmm. So, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of an old... It, it's not really a spider, and it didn't really die. Uh, uh-huh. but yeah, it's, it's an elder god kind they, of They They basically, they basically kind of call it a spider a lot, so I was just like, okay, it's a spider. I mean, it's like the, the, the fucking thing in It, they call it a spider. It's not really a spider. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we, we don't really get into it, because you don't really see many of the elder gods. Like, I think the closest would be the Guardians of Time, yeah. but even then they're not really, like, ancient like evil creatures they're just dudes uh but yeah um the web planet what'd you think it was (laughs) alright I there were little nuanced things about it I liked but overall I was just kind of like eh 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 yeah, it's a. It could have been a really good episode, like a, a really good, like politically driven episode, because it's like the Zabi are basically like an oppressed class, like they were slaves under the Monoptra, yeah. and they kind of the Animus came along and kind of forced them to revolt and have this war between them and the Monoptra. Uh-huh. So it's like you could have something really interesting there, but they kind of ignore it because, I mean the. The writer didn't want to write that. It's not what he wrote the story about. Yeah, whereas the script editor was was like, okay, uh, I see elements of socialism or communism because, again, Mm -hmm. back then... uh, The Red Scare, all that. Well, this was... The, the, The sort of idea of communism and socialism, etc., stemmed from this sort of thought of like well they're a lot like they're a lot like insects the the way their society works you you have to conform in their society or else you will not thrive in it uh Mm -hmm. so it's like okay it's why in a lot of science fiction you will have insect like uh creatures represent political ideals uh Partially, sometimes it's because of anti-Semitism. Yes. Uh, sometimes it's because it was a a worthy uh, metaphor for, like, an easy metaphor for people to latch onto for uh, essentially anything that wasn't neoliberal capitalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though that wasn't really a thing. Uh, so what would you rate this one out of ten? Four, probably. Four or five. Wow, okay. Um, wow. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. Why? Why? Oh, Oh, no. Because we're watching this episode again! (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, okay. Um, yeah, the next episode is The Crusade. We're not watching it, because every single episode is missing bar one, I think. Uh, and god, that is an episode that you do not want to watch the telesnap for. I did, and it was a fucking mistake. Gotcha. Uh, I would rather wait for an animated version, which may never happen, because it's not exactly an interesting episode. It's a straight-up historical one, baby. Uh, so, next, we're gonna skip right towards the Space Museum. A great little episode. Um, Woohoo! Uh, if, I guess... Uh, this episode coming out, uh, the, uh, movie thing that Dia said she was talking about is yeah. today, technically? I don't know what day it is in America no. when I publish um, this. So you post these on Wednesdays. The movie night is on Thursday. At 10 p.m. Well, I, I, 10.30 p.m. Central Time. Well, no, I post these on, like, at, like, like, uh, 11 o'clock my time, which is, like... My, which is like early morning in America, isn't it? It's like 3 p.m. Jim. No, it's not. Well, I, I, well, regardless, it. 3 it, p.m. in America is like okay. eight o'clock in the morning then for let's, me. Let's let's put it this way: it will be on the third. Yeah, the third with at, at ten whatever fucking Deer said and yeah. in Deer's Discord. I'll include a link in the fucking Patreon so you can join it. But we're watching Black Sheep apparently, However, and it's gonna be something I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna go because I, I the call that I got during this was for some guy to come over to uh, drill some tile, uh, re oh. like install some tiles that are on my balcony because there's mm -hmm. a leak going down to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to do some microphone fuckery to get rid of like um, whatever noise he's also, gonna be doing. Also, we've included a rank that you can join, which is basically just a little tag that you can get on your name that'll help us with you joining the voice call to watch the movie, because we are going to be recording commentary for it. So we try are going to try to have everybody else muted but us, but you're free to come watch the movie with us and, like, talk in the chat and, like, make funny jokes in the chat. And we'll probably, like, read the chat, too, and be like, ha funny joke. So I mean, what do you mean? Probably we will read the chat. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, I'm just kind of uh, stupid sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Next episode, Space Museum. It's gonna Woo! be good. Let's do it. Cool. Let's do it. I love the Space Museum. It's a great little episode. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah,